So when you get into the wireless world, there is really two types of radios out there currently. There is the type that will be a separate antenna from the radio um, that will have some form of coax cable like this that will screw in. And installation of them, usually they'll have some form of bracket that you can mount to a pole and be able to point where you need to go. This would then obviously have a separate either enclosure or another thing for the radio. Um, a lot of organizations are now kind of switching to kind of an all-in-one unit, which is what this one is. And um, this one is really easy to install. Um, and this is the reason why people are switching to them. And you can see just even the size difference between the two antennas. Um, obviously, this one will go a lot farther. But if you don't need to go that far, why waste space up on your mast arm or whatever? So on this one, this one actually is kind of neat because it has its own kind of ball and knuckle uh, ball and knuckle mount. So if I loosen this, you can actually move this knuckle around so that you can actually aim it to wherever you're going. So it um, makes it really, really nice, like I said, when it's up there to align the radio. Because once you get this up there, you know, you have this free range to go basically anywhere you want. And you can see kind of how much movement you have. Um, the other thing to note with the all-in-ones, a lot of the time it's just a single ethernet that you'll either plug into a PoE capable switch or a PoE injector. So this one actually has a PoE injector. Um, and so this is what a PoE injector looks like. So you have power that comes in, 120 AC, that then goes out uh, this one states that there's a PoE and a LAN. So it's always important to plug your PoE devices into the PoE side oh, because yeah. you have voltage going to them. Right. If you plug this into a switch, you can fry a switch. So, <laughs> and then this one actually, when you plug it in, it has a little um, door that just snaps in. So with that being said, on quite a few of these all-in-ones, um, the Ethernet cable should always be down because obviously this isn't completely sealed. So it's not completely weather tight. If it's down, less chance of moisture or whatever getting into it. So is that they actually do have a level on the back here. So you can get them perfectly level. Um, oh, there it is. So you can see. And then that way your cord is perfectly down. So, is it important that it's level? Um, it is because your beam pattern. Um, so, um, really simple because I have this already kind of set up. But <clears throat> you would mount it onto the pole, um, tighten everything up. With this ball and knuckle, it makes it really nice because um, once everything's kind of tightened up, you can just move to wherever you're going to point your other radio at. Or if you're even doing uh, more of a, if you're going to basically point it uh, to basically allow Wi-Fi for other devices or whatever, point it to wherever you need to. For now, we're just going to point it at our other antenna that's on the other side of the room. I'm going to tighten it up, and it's going to stay there. So, and then once you get it to where you want, you just tighten it up, and you're good to go. Um, as far as aligning them, when you align them, you point them to where you're going to be putting the other one, and you can basically kind of look at back and kind of say, okay, I'm going to align it, you know, going towards that way. Um, for the most part, when you plug in the other side, as long as you align it the same way, it should come up. Um, the times where it don't are the really long runs or the ones where you're using, like, an 18-degree beam or a really, really narrow beam. Um, in the, the five degree beam. The beam settings are all in the software then? Uh, the beam settings are actually determined by the antenna. Oh, okay. Um, so, so the beam pattern is basically a flat line, a flat, like a plane? No, it is not. Okay. Um, and I can, the best way to represent that is to show you a diagram that shows you how the beam um, goes out. 
it kind of goes out in a weird kind of lobe type thing. Um, so that's the other thing to kind of remember that you might still be connected to the other radio on the other end, but you might be hitting a lobe like this. And so you won't be getting the speeds that you might be getting if it was hitting directly in the center. Otherwise, a lot of the alignment, you can um, either use the tester and see what kind of signal you're getting, or a lot of the radios out there actually will help you align it via signal and DB, and some of them will actually give you kind of a diagram of where the wireless signal is hitting at on the actual antenna. So, and then some of them will actually have like interference. That's another big one that ends up happening, especially in the free 2.4 gig and 5 gig uh, wireless network uh, range, basically your home router, um, your home Wi-Fi, I should say. Um, there's a lot of interference in that range and some of them will actually give you a really nice diagram showing you, okay, yes, there's interference at 5.4 gigahertz, so don't use that. Um, a lot of the radios also have an auto that'll just automatically pick the best frequency that it thinks it, it is that's out there. It's kind of a catch-22 if you use it because it can cause issues as well doing that. But and, uh, it's Signal switching and things like that all happen inside of the unit there? Yep. So the other thing to notate, and I guess I didn't say this, if the camera's still on, um, is that a lot of them will have some form of power and signal right here for or somewhere on the unit to show you what's actually going on with the unit unit but it'll actually physically show you kind of how the signal's going so if you don't want to check the software you can actually physically check on the unit quite a few quite a bit and this is the other one that we have that we use so you can see a little bit better how it has that signal meter there um, so as this thing, as this connects to another one, you'll actually see LEDs show up on here. 